All right. A very warm welcome to everyone, um, both folks from who have joined us from India and uh, from from the US. Am I audible, guys? Yes. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, welcome once again. And uh, what we look forward to is uh, today's demo session of mobile performance testing, which would involve a uh, elaborate discussion as to what we are supposed to head to, what are so, what we're supposed to be headed towards, and uh, what's in store. Uh, that's what is the agenda for our today's session. Right now, just for queries, we'll take them later. Uh, please park your questions. So we can have those uh, gathered together. All right. Um, so, guys, here is what the content looks like. Mobile performance, why measure? Uh, yeah, one thing is there uh, for sure. If we have taken care of our web-based applications, thick clients, uh, you know, different protocols like let's say Cognos-based protocols, or for that matter, uh, SAP-based protocols, uh, uh, there, there is a re there is an area as to why or an intent as to why do we do that. However, when it comes to mobile performance, the reasons tend to differ. Okay, uh, which is what we will be looking at. Uh, that's that's one thing. We'll be looking at critical factors. We'll be looking at the overall mobile performance architecture. Uh, how many of us are actually uh, familiar with the concept of MCA, mobile computing architecture? Excellent. Okay, great answer. Because that will help us to uh, dive through it as well. Okay, uh, scope and impact. Uh, nothing much to cover in that because we all know. So I won't really take you through a lot of uh, you know theory. Uh, approach of mobile performance testing. Yes, that is something I would want to uh, kind of uh, deep dive uh, through. Uh, recording methods. Now uh, we will talk about recording methods when we when we uh, come towards it. Uh, we will talk about uh, recording methods via a basic. Uh, as someone shared, uh, we can maybe use a fiddler and you know capture the uh, uh, session out of it uh, and have that uh, imported within the load runner. That's one of the approach. And we will look at the other approaches also that we are. Uh, wanting to uh, you know kind of incorporate within our sessions uh, that's one thing tomorrow we will have a introduction to the working session and the prerequisites as to going forward for the next week what we would want you all to be prepared with when it comes to actually installation of softwares on your machines as well okay uh, that will give you a good time to uh, one week will be a good time i believe to have yourself ready uh, because a couple of softwares which we require are uh, are, are maybe procured on a trial basis and that is something that you would want to uh, you know kind of download for yourself or if need be then i can make it available maybe i can upload it on a google drive and uh, you know just share the link and you all can just download it there uh, there on okay uh, true client ajax protocol that will be question three and four uh, how many of us have actually used the true client ajax protocol four. i, I have used, used okay chandan himanshu and they just winning. All right. Anyone else? So you all have used it for mobile. I take it, right? No, we have used for like a web application. Ah, okay. Uh, well, I'm referring from more. So everything and anything that we talk, we talk in the language of mobile. Uh, I've used said. it for mobile. Okay, great, Manshu. Okay. Anyone else? They just winning. How about you? Uh, no, I've used it for web application. Okay, excellent. So, uh, uh, yeah, fine. Then, then we can take it up, uh, you know, uh, on, on, a, on a deeper level on that one. Uh, we will look at uh, user agent string settings and uh, stuff like that. Uh, user agent, best, uh, how many of us are actually aware of the concept of user agent string? I'm aware. Okay. Uh, I take it others are not. So uh, it's, it's as simple as that, right? Uh, let's say, for example, you are uh, you, you, you're visiting a country. Okay, how would you actually go ahead and speak with that uh, speak in that country? Is that basic country's native language? Uh, user agent string is nothing but a particular string which gets generated based on what environment you're going to be part of, what environment is your application belonging to, and what uh, uh, OS OS is uh, kind of being involved. Okay, as a part of the uh, application uh, environment setup okay uh, moving on uh, true client objects native native protocol 
Uh, now, this native protocol is a slightly interesting because it doesn't really work by itself. It does require uh, a, a, a explicit uh, entity uh, that would be like mobile center. Uh, anyone familiar with mobile center over here? Okay, great. So mobile center is uh, uh, has actually, I would say, two components. One is the mobile center server and one is the mobile center connector. Uh, mobile center server is primarily like you having a uh, server which will cater to all your requests. Okay, it will act like a middleware wherein every request that you that you fire will actually be taken care of by the server. Okay, uh, and thereafter it helps you emulate. Uh, it is not an emulator, but I'm using mind me. I'm using the word emulate a real time view of your mobile. Okay, so we are not talking about just an emulator. Uh, okay, sorry, uh, I forgot to ask. Uh, in session three and four, we are also looking at the word called emulator. Uh, how many of us have actually used an emulator with Load Runner in conjunction with Load Runner? I'm not talking about True Client. I'm talking about an explicit emulator with a with with Load Runner. Okay, excellent. So we'll, we'll be using that as well. So that would kind of be an advanced level of uh, uh, maybe recording a, a, a script from an emulator, uh, which is nothing but primarily used for native based applications. I am making sense, guys, or am I too fast? Am I too slow? Please let me know. It's OK. OK, how about others? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's OK. OK, so please, please stop me. Please ask me to slow down. Wherever my pace is too high, I will, I will, uh, I would be happy to uh, take it low. Yeah. Uh, so emulator that we are talking about will specifically be used uh, from a native app perspective, where you will actually be able to create a uh, HTTP HTML level script for a app that is installed on your mobile. Okay. Uh, that is what an emulator will help us get done. Okay, that's one. Secondly, coming back to mobile center, mobile center will help us actually derive uh, the value out of your current mobile application, current mobile device itself. Okay, so emulator is more of an emulator. Mobile center will be more specific to your mobile and the apps installed on your mobile. Okay, so uh, I think uh, that is that is that is that is the area which is an uncharted area that not too many navigate into and uh, we will be covering that as a part of our session three and four at session five and six. All right. And then uh, eventually uh, we will be running a low test. We'll be analyzing the performance tests uh, results after that and uh, take you through a couple of metrics that are essential for mobile performance. Okay. So uh, that's, that's a quick uh, nutshell view as to what's headed to your way. Uh, and uh, anything else that you think is missing in this agenda, please tell me. Yeah, I have a couple of queries on this. Yes, let me note down. Hold on. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, like it should not be only load runner, okay? because as we are heading towards, you know, all our uh, open source, mm -hmm. so it should cover open source tools, uh, tools as well. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, like uh, J J meter or uh, like Gutling or any any open source uh, tool I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. and second thing is uh, you didn't you didn't cover anything on monitoring side. Yeah. Like uh, how how can we monitor during the load test? Mm -hmm. So uh, guys, here's the thing, right? Mobile center, as I mentioned, uh, has something called as App Pulse as well, uh, which we will deep dive into also. That's so this mobile center is a freeware or it is a, a licensed one? It's a licensed version. Yeah, so is there anything you are going to cover open source? OK, we will explore that as well. Freeware on the monitoring aspect. We can we can get that. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, you are, and you are going to cover a native application, right? Like directly mobile app performance testing. 
Yes, we will be covering yeah. native applications. Because it, so, if it is only browser based mobile application, like I don't think it is it is anything like different than uh, web. So we are yeah. more concerned about the complex mobile native applications. Yeah, correct. So uh, I'm, I'm literally talking about applications like ICIC direct, uh, with, uh, you know, example, uh, which is normally installed on your mobile and stuff. So uh, you're referring to native applications like that. So we will be having a mix of it for sure. Uh, there will be the web-based uh, testing also that we'll be doing and also the native apps that we'll be doing. Yeah. Okay, and one more thing. I just have a, a query. So uh, let's say like uh, we want to test it on our uh, uh, like laptops. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I'm not wrong, if I'm going for a load runner community edition, we can have only 50 web HTTP HTML protocol free. Right. So yes. how can we test it uh, or through like uh, you know other other protocols? How, how can we do the load test? So other protocols are still available to you in the community edition. That's not a problem. Okay, but we uh, cannot uh, run it, right? Yes. No. 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 You can. You can run it. Why? Why can't you run it? So you can definitely like. Have... I, yeah. Uh, we can run it for uh, make limitation of fifty users. That should be sufficient yes. for from the learning perspective uh, point of view. Yes. Yes. But 50 users, uh, like true client as well, we can run. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Chandan, here's the thing, right? We will help you get through as far as till the analysis part is concerned. So you can leave that uh, responsibility to us. We will make sure that you know we run, we get through the scripting, uh, load tests, uh, scenario creation, load test execution, and towards the analysis as well. Okay. So that is something that we'll take care of. Just to answer your question, Sean. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank okay. you. All right. Anyone else, guys? Any other questions that you want? Any other items that you want to see in the agenda or maybe are missing in the agenda? Okay, I will take that as a no. Okay, um, so other tools, yes, open source, we can definitely look at it, uh, Chandan. And uh, monitoring perspective, we will look at Apple's. We will also look at some other uh, freeware options that we will be having for uh, monitoring the uh, performance of the mobile apps, right? We can do that. Okay, uh, I see Kazi just joined. Yes. Yes, Kazi, can you just give a quick introduction of yourself, please? Hey, sorry guys, you have to bear for it today. Uh, this this weekend will only be a slight uh, uh, sluggish, if you may feel. Uh, but obviously, we'll be picking up pace uh, starting tomorrow and obviously from the upcoming weekends. Okay. Yeah, yeah Kasi. Yeah, myself, Kasi, and uh, I'm having 12 plus years of ex industry experience in uh, total manual and uh, performance side. And uh, okay. especially performance, sir, I have having a uh, uh, five plus years of experience in a uh, load runner, J meter uh, uh, tools uh, experience, and I'm having. And recently, we started using App Dynamics uh, monitoring tool, and all. so okay. intentionally, I want to learn this uh, mobile performance testing, how it works, and all. I going forward, uh, uh, maybe most of the companies will come to the apps and all for the mobile testing, and all. So I just want to. So my interest to learn this and that. So that's why I'm planning to join this class. Okay, great. That's a good choice, Kasi. Thank you. Uh, Kasi, we just quickly uh, dive to the agenda. I will share the slide uh, at the end of the meeting with everyone so that you can have uh, the agenda for yourself. And uh, maybe, Kasi, can you please go on mute? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, so um, yeah, so I will be sharing this slide uh, with everyone. Uh, if you all still have any items to be added to, you can definitely, you know, kind of get back to me uh, on the next session. All right, uh, we will now commence with uh, our actual session for today. So good with agenda. Okay, 
Uh, how many of us actually, so I'm not going to go through the deck and bore you all for it. Uh, I'm going to simply be asking questions and keeping it interactive. Uh, how many of us actually think that a mobile performance testing concept is different than in, in comparison to uh, a, uh, a normal web-based concept? In what ways is it different? Uh, yes, it's different uh, because mobile puts a lot of res uh, resource uh, on the servers. Mm -hmm. So we need to test it from dis uh, different dimensions uh, and analyze it from different perspective. Uh, what resources are you referring to? Uh, uh, if in terms of uh, resources uh, uh, used on the load generators perspective, server the memory and the disk uh, CPU on the server's perspective, uh, mm -hmm. normal web user might uh, say put a lesser you lesser uh, load on the servers, but when it goes from mobile, it's more resource uh, intensive. Precisely. Okay, great. All right. Uh, anyone else? Welcome. Okay. So, uh, have you seen uh, when it comes to your actual uh, load test also, uh, there is a expected behavior. You remember when we used to actually learn our performance testing or load testing, we used to see that there is a curve or maybe there is a particular Expected, you know, a predictable behavior that we normally see uh, in, in, in an ideal load test, in, in a web-based test, basically, right? Uh, however, when it comes to mobile performance testing, what we look at is a totally unpredictable arena. Uh, Hari, are you asking for presenting? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, guys, I would appreciate when I'm talking, you could be on mute. If you have a question, then you can definitely unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, so, having said that, uh, yes, the mobile performance testing, what we are looking at is a complete different arena in terms of availability. That's number one. When I'm talking about availability, I'm talking about your uh, uh, architecture availability. Okay. Uh, it is completely different. The mobile performance testing will account for uh 24 7 24 7 of uh, avail uh availability of your existing architecture with web-based at times we tend to give it a little leverage with regards to the number of hours of, of being available uh specifically because if it might be a geographically distributed application still it will be used for maybe 18 to 20 hours it will not be 24 7 available but with mobile it has to be 24 7 available because a user can even get up from his bed and you know access the app so it might make a request to your uh, to your architecture so that that's the primary uh, look at it secondly uh, when it comes to mobile there is a major factor called the network which differs from our general uh, load runner or a basic web based uh, load web based load testing right uh, normally how many of us have actually experimented with touching the network bandwidth while a uh, configuration and load runner or do we just keep it like use maximum bandwidth? How many of us have actually tried that? Uh, yes, uh, I have done it. Uh, when we do mobile performance testing, we have to configure it uh, different, different like uh, uh, bandwidths so like 4G, LT, 3G. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, that that's some that's something uh, Himanshu, you've done it for the true client protocol itself, or even for the web-based thing. Uh, for both. For both. Excellent. Okay. Yes. So configuring your network uh, profile is something that is that is crucial when it comes to a mobile performance test. Uh, that will really help you uh, simulate a real-time situation. And uh, while that is the case, we will also look at what factors are crucial when it comes to fluctuating networks. Okay, what factors are crucial that one would want to pay attention to when it, when it comes to fluctuating networks? Uh, that that's the second thing. Okay. Uh, now we look at so what you see on screen is uh, mobile performance affects brand value the reason why it becomes crucial is because yes it does affect your brand value you nowadays you have a couple of feedbacks like these which are on screen and your brand has gone for a cross okay uh, so so that that's something you would definitely not want to have it on google play store right so when you download or, or when you come when you come across a new application what are the what are the couple of areas that you see on google play store or for that matter uh, maybe a mac what 
what factors do you see before installing an application? Size of the file. Size of Sorry? the file. Size of the Size file. Of. Okay, that is one factor that you see. Excellent. Okay. What Ratings. Ratings, precisely. Okay. And what else? Uh, Size. Size, yes, size mentioned. Anything else? Do you all see the people, number of... How many yes. people are downloaded the application? Ah, exactly, exactly. How many people have downloaded the application? Because that kind of helps you get a reality check, right? So uh, we look at how many people have downloaded the application. So guys, basically, Mobile performance does affect the brand value to a lot of extent, and these factors are visible even to a first-time visitor at at any point in time, right? So you definitely don't want to uh, kind of mess up with that aspect. Uh, may I ask you to go on mute? Uh, okay, or I can mute. That's fine. Okay. Um, key factors affecting uh, mobile performance. We are talking about three crucial factors. Number one, the rendering. Number two, the network. Number three, backend. Now, if you ask me which of these are important, which of these three is the most important, I would say all of them because primarily uh, your backend and network can play a tough time when it comes to mobile. Uh, yeah, when, when it comes to mobile uh, performance testing. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, having said that, uh, we will be simulating all of that. So be rest assured, we will be covering this for sure. Okay. Uh, we will also be, I'm not sure if you have heard of synthetic level monitoring. How many of us have actually heard of that? I'm going to unmute you for that. Yes, I have heard about it. Okay. Uh, Himanshu, have you done synthetic monitoring? Uh, not really, just a uh, concept wise. Okay. Uh, can you explain us to just what is your understanding on it? Uh, we uh, uh, monitor uh, the application for uh, various layers of information performance in, uh, performance. Uh, it's not uh, that we use uh, only uh, the load runner or any tool. Without any other tools uh, through other scripting, uh, we can also do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, thanks for that. So here's the thing, right? Uh, when it comes to synthetic, okay. How many of us have actually attempted with Silk Performer? Has anyone is anyone a Silk Performer person over here? Okay. Now, synthetic monitoring uh, is specifically an ability for you to deep dive into a lot of areas, or I would say layers of your application. Uh, it can it can be primarily on the server side and also on the client side wherein you can say that okay these are my resources for a curtain for, for a certain page which is being displayed at the moment okay now what you can also do is you can have your transactions you can literally have your transactions being mapped to the resource that is actually being displayed so for example we have transaction one two uh, LR start transaction one start transaction two and then one and two Within that start and end, if you have certain steps, you can literally go about mapping. You can literally go about mapping that transaction. Yeah, you can literally go about mapping that transaction with the particular steps. Uh, with uh, of of, of uh, sorry, what am I saying? You can actually go about mapping your transaction with the particular resource that is respective to that step. Am I making sense? Let me repeat that. You can actually map your transaction with respect to the resource for that particular step? Yes, uh, like uh, if there are say net test uh, users uh, performing, how much uh, CPU memory is being consumed by each resources and for each transactions? This is what uh, we have uh, done it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is a part of it, uh, Himanshu. Thanks for adding up to that. Uh, however, we are looking more on uh, bottleneck identification when it comes to synthetic monitoring okay uh, we are able to identify at what 
point are we looking for an uh, for an issue uh, which resource is consuming the maximum amount of time okay synthetic monitoring really helps us de uh, derive that achieve that okay um, that is there pardon me so back end and all we'll definitely get into it today uh, we'll give you a quick uh, understanding of it now do you see this is my screen visible guys yeah okay uh, the fluctuation that comes when it, uh, when it when it comes to mobile performance testing the fluctuation is a lot is a lot specifically due to the network bandwidth and the back end that can at times be responsible as well okay uh, so these are the factors that that, that uh, actually kind of hold uh, crucial uh, weightage when it comes to executing your mobile load test okay i'm not going to uh, dwell on it too much because we need to get into the content also this is the okay all right so guys this is the architecture that we would be deep diving tomorrow okay uh, we will take you through a step by step component of the architecture okay um, and while that is the case we will be ensuring to also address bottleneck areas with regards to each and every component okay so let me give you a quick trailer as to what it would be like uh, so for example uh, maybe we're talking about this lines also right we're talking about these lines there is a reason for these lines app server and db server uh, at times the number of connections from the web server to the app server and the number of connections from the app server to the db server can be different okay uh, what it what, uh, so what does it take to have an ideal number of connections that is something that we're going to be talking about we're also going to be talking about maybe like a cdn right content delivery networks hey how many of us are actually familiar with this concept of cdn yeah i'm aware of okay thanks and then anyone else Okay, uh, Chandan, can you just uh, take a minute and uh, let us know as to what? Yeah, so this is basically like, uh, let's say my servers are placed in US and I'm accessing the application from India, then there will be some network latency. So in, in that case, if there will be like, you know, servers hosted in a nearby location or suppose let's say in Mumbai, so i can access the application faster compared to if it is in us so that is something uh, called content delivery network correct thanks thanks for that Chandan. so uh, yeah that that is actually content delivery network what it primarily holds importance for is the latency uh, that a person uh, that, that a person can experience at his or her end uh, with the fact how soon the packets are being transmitted so uh, not necessary every time you know you you have you need to have your uh, content delivery network making a request to the isp and thereafter it goes to the load balancer and all maybe the content delivery network is equipped with a high level of memory cache as well which is able to store all the most very uh, you know frequently made requests which is what it will be able to immediately cater to you so that reduces your overall response time significantly okay uh, that's what the idea of a content delivery network is and with AWS in picture uh, there is something called as uh, elastic cache yeah if I'm not wrong have you heard the concept of elastic cache guys am I audible to everyone just wanted to understand because I am seeing certain challenges being faced by uh, certain people uh, yeah I can hear you yeah, I can hear you able to hear your voice okay okay are we good so far with the content oh, yes okay great uh so you haven't heard the concept of elastic cache okay no it's an AWS, yeah so, so it's an aws concept wherein what we are looking at is user is given the ability to have his or her own memory cache con uh, memory cache memory cache capacity increased or decreased uh, primarily this is done because if you want to optimize your network see over here you can definitely do this is like your setup okay uh, in-house setup this this is something more of a specific to a company okay however when you come beyond this 
uh, area this is where the actual load is faced in the first place okay the employee whoever or the customer whoever is requesting for any kind of a data will actually hit the cloud service or will or will hit the cdn in the first place okay if your cdn is well equipped if your cdn is well equipped to serve those requests then it really kind of reduces the load what comes to your actual architecture okay uh, not necessary every time the cdn will be hit with a request it will be able to uh, cater to one it has to make requests okay thereafter there is something called as a soft parsing and a hard parsing as well uh, when it comes to web server app server and db server uh, are we familiar with the concept of soft parsing and hard parsing okay how many of us have actually seen uh, heard about an awr uh, report yeah i'm aware of okay so uh, chandan are you aware of hard passing and soft passing within it yes excellent okay so uh, guys hard passing is something that uh, okay i'm spilling out the beans actually but so be it because it needs to be interesting at the same time uh, hard passing is something that a request is not is not served in the initial stages wherein it has to go towards the db server and fetch the request fetch the response for it right the db server has to respond for that request uh, soft passing is something maybe the web server or the app server in the first place in fact not even the app server i would say that the web server is having that ability to respond back with the existing responses which has been made frequently over the period of time okay so for that you don't need to make a actual hit to the db which is called as soft parsing okay we will actually look at even breaking down of a request when it comes to uh, the query execution plan okay uh, what what happens to uh, what happens to a query execution plan as to how a db server interprets a request that is something also we will take a look at tomorrow okay so uh, guys that's the uh, uh, content which is which is crucial i believe to understand at any lotus end to end you got to first understand these are the components and what all areas can i go ahead and apply my optimization okay uh, you can definitely have your outputs uh, at the end of a web test and you can just supply them as a performance test results uh, it would hold a lot of value if you can also mention recommendations that okay you know what can we place this particular css over this particular location which will help us uh, you know kind of load the application more in a responsive based design have you all worked in a responsive based design application that's a quite a common thing actually these days so have all of us have had a chance to work on a responsive design based application okay i'm not able to hear anyone uh, like can you elaborate a bit on that sure like exactly uh, so what for example this when i have a site called uh, let's say uh, mysite.com now you are requesting you are you are trying to access that particular page from your mobile one person is accessing that page from a ipad or the other would be from a web based uh, laptop or uh, maybe any other device right so based on or, or or an ios device as well so based on what the uh, device is we uh, the, the the application will be co uh, content uh, the the okay let me put it this way right the application will be rendered accordingly okay based on what the device is that is what you would call as a responsive design application response based design application okay okay not no originally when these applications are built they are not really responsive based design however third generation and fourth generation now yes we are having that uh, mechanism inbuilt by default but uh, earlier existing applications if you kind of reduce the design right for example let me just uh, exit the presentation hold on <coughs> sorry so let's take a uh, flip card right um okay you see the way it is being displayed at the moment yeah and uh, let me show you what happens when we change you see what happened guys hello yes 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 so yes. what happened what was the change or let, let me go slow let me go slow 
it is it is rendering gradually as you scroll or as you maximize or minimize correct do you see this control wasn't there earlier in the first place it was not there at all okay yeah but now all of that content has actually come across in this format now that is what i would call as a good response based design okay but this is not true with all applications okay this is not true with all pages this is not true with all applications either okay that's a response based design okay so, um, okay yeah uh, so what what we will be looking at is how a response based design is catered to which is where we will also be understanding the concept of user agent trait okay which holds importance for a response based design application yeah uh, we will be looking at the mobile components also i think that is something we will start today itself because i want to keep it more interesting uh, uh, mobile components we'll understand the android architecture okay we will understand the android architecture so what you are seeing currently is let me put it this way right the title of this slide should have actually been mobile computing architecture okay mobile performance computing or mobile computing architecture is what i would hold this uh, slide's title there is another slide which i will take you all through that will be called as the mobile uh, sorry android architecture okay and that will kind of help you understand uh, when you it will make more sense when you even touch your mobile the next time okay guys is it holding value please tell me if it is not then we'll jump into more value yes okay uh these are crucial items guys especially when it comes to you might not you might find that this is theory as of now but for analysis perspective these items do hold importance for interview perspective these items do hold importance if anyone asks you where okay fair enough you had a mobile performance architecture and what have you done to optimize it then maybe you don't want to go all bonkers you want to make sure that you have tangible answers which do make sense okay because theory answers definitely would kind of uh, be very uh, evident all right uh, we will move on to the next one impact of network yeah as i said earlier network holds a lot of importance when it comes to mobile performance testing uh, you see the stability you see the stability that it is performing i'm not asking just for the lower uh, being lower in its uh, graph but i'm talking about there is a rhythm to it okay there is a rhythm to it do you see any kind of a rhythm over here not at all okay with with the mobile uh, when it comes to mobile network conditions there is no rhythm thanks to vodafone idea and uh, airtel yeah all right uh, that is what your mobile technology now uh, please don't misunderstand this with uh, architecture or don't misunderstand this with android architecture i'm talking about your mobile technology okay we are talking about the underlying components as to when you are using your uh chrome on your mobile app or for that matter on your uh your, your your iphone how does it actually just function i'm talking about the user interface components okay uh this is obviously a browser your minimal browser uh which comes with your uh mobile uh, os itself that is what you look at okay uh html4 uh let's say is the is the is the underlying technology for it uh, when it comes to iphone and ipad you are looking at an html5 and responsive design okay uh, have you faced the challenge that on your mobile not all web applications will render completely or appropriately has have you seen that happening sometimes yes. trying yeah. to open up and maybe you have to auto rotate and you know kind of uh, drag and uh, drag and shift to the left or to the right that's when it comes to uh, viewing the content on your actual uh, mobile devices okay uh, but you look at this when it comes to iphone by default by default there is a responsive design ability because they are actually going and using html5 okay that is uh, that is the beauty of what html5 brings to your uh, device okay uh, we are we are looking about a hybrid app uh, okay are we aware of the concept of hybrid app i think when talking we were talking about web based and native hybrid app pata are we aware of it Uh, I take that as a no. Okay, uh, please. If you if you are aware of it, please share. Okay, that will that will really help me to learn as well. If I'm if I don't know things, yeah. 
Are, are we aware of hybrid app? Okay. Yeah, someone was answering. Hmm, okay. Uh, just some disturbance. Fine. So hybrid app. Let's say, for example, you have ICICI Direct, right? Uh, it is a native thick client on your mobile for sure. Okay. Uh, again, ICICI Direct being my uh, favorite example because that kind of uh, is a hybrid app in the first place. Uh, it it integrates into a thick client at the same time it integrates into a web based uh, uh, client as well whenever there is a requirement for one. Okay. How? For example. Um, let me check if I can show you something. Guys, please stop me if there is any. Uh, any area that you want to understand okay so uh, yeah please don't pay attention to the screen it's just ads that keep coming it's a default thing <laughs> okay all right uh, so what I've started currently is nothing but an emulator okay and uh, this emulator comes with a couple of free games uh, nevertheless uh, this emulator will help us uh, throughout the uh, series of sessions to understand what kind of app what architecture uh, what are we talking about when it comes to rendering and stuff like that? Okay, uh, hybrid app is an app which will have certain pieces of its application on a web-based approach and certain pieces of its application on the actual installed app. Okay, so that is what uh, the uh, hybrid app is all about. Uh, native app, obviously, as by the name suggests, it's a thick client, obviously, like a installed software on your uh, on your machine. On your on your device, I would say. Uh, Safari browser again that makes it a web-based app. Uh, then we have web services uh, which uh, directly uh, integrate with the native app, and uh, you know it, it 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 kind of talks back to the architecture and come and gets you the details, uh, gets you the response. Uh, that's the uh, responses or, or the responsibility of a web-based service. Okay. Uh, what approaches we are going to talk about? We are going to talk about uh, True Client Ajax mobile. Uh, uh, we are all, we are going to attempt with agent user agent spoofing. We are going to look at your HTTP HTML protocol. Uh, basically, uh, some someone mentioned about Fiddler. That not being the only part, we will also be looking at native app. As I think Chandan or I'm not sure Manchu asked for it. Uh, we'll be looking at a native app being recorded from a. Uh, uh, HTTP ML uh, protocol uh, perspective. Okay, we'll be doing that. Uh, Android, uh, again, as I said, we will be trying to use a record emulator. So this and this actually integrates with each other. Okay, uh, that is something that we'll be uh, looking at. Okay, now approaches that we are talking about. Excuse me. Yeah, approach. Guys, uh, one more thing. Uh, every session is going to be a one and a half hour session. If you all need a break in between, we can have a five minute break, maybe like a you know a tea break or a, or a loo break that you would want to have, uh, and we can resume that way. Uh, if at all we are good, we can continue with the space. Can we have a quick shout out? I am good. Okay, how about others? We are good. Yeah, fine. Yeah, good. Okay, okay, great. Okay, so. Uh, what we will be doing is, uh, as uh, someone said about Fiddler, uh, that will help us record a capture file or a session capture file. Uh, and uh, one can go ahead and import that within a uh, HTTP ML uh, level script. And uh, you'll be able to see load generator, uh, sorry, uh, your view gen automatically converting it to a uh, LR script. Okay, uh, that is there. Uh, however, there are other options like a record emulator, which I would want to bring your attention towards. It needs an APK file. Now your APK file is nothing but a file which which is an installation file for a particular application on your mobile. Okay. Uh, by default, we are used to hear the word called .exe. Okay. Uh, when it comes to maybe installation files or standalone files uh, for a general application that needs to be or software that needs to be installed on your uh, laptop or device or desktop. 
uh, when it comes to mobile, uh, the language is APK, okay, uh, which is where uh, this file is primarily responsible to uh, to represent your application. Okay, let me put it that way. Now, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be having your device emulator. Okay, we are going to be having your device emulator uh, integrate with the APK. Okay, and um, uh, that 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 will something that that is something that we would want to to pay attention to uh, because uh, that would be an advanced kind of a thing. Uh, we would also we would recommend we will give you already on the WhatsApp group that we are already there. Uh, if anyone is not there, you can just ping me ping later on in chat in, in, the, in the chat group. Uh, we will tell you what emulator you need to go about installing. Uh, uh, again, a quick point: these emulators will be freewares. They will not be licensed stuff. Okay. Also, there will be freewares, and you can definitely go playing around with them. Okay. So far, good. Yes. Okay, uh, so just that you all should uh, know, APK is nothing but your uh, Android package uh, which holds the software together. Okay, uh, now so it talks about record emulator and proxy recording. How many of us have actually tried the proxy recording approach with Loadrunner for mobile? Excellent. We'll take that up as well. Okay. Uh, Ajax True Client, uh, again, that's a common approach, uh, and we will navigate through it, especially for people who are new to mobile performance testing and or maybe somewhere in the middle as well. Okay, um, so that's about the approach, guys. We will be talking about uh, your, and okay, you know what, one thing is not mentioned over here, and that's the mobile center, which is the crucial aspect also. Okay, the mobile center is actually you uh, connecting your mobile to your laptop and uh, Recording a script on your mobile as well. Okay, that, that is something we'll be doing that um, Eventually all of that so what I want you to keep in mind is I want you to keep in mind this screen I want you to keep in mind this screen. Maybe not if possible so early. That's okay. Leave this You don't need to pay attention to too much of it. We will cover this in detail later on uh, But as of now what I want you to just keep in mind take away for today very simple We have mobile technology that you are looking at why is it a responsive design? What makes it a responsive design? And what kind of recording methods are we looking at? Okay, so that would be your crucial takeaway today. And uh, uh, maybe you can also prepare your questions uh, for uh, the next weekend session. Yeah. Okay, uh, with that, we come to the end of this slide. And uh, enough of just a uh, high level view. We will now deep dive into. Uh, an actual Android architecture. Hello. Yeah, I'm out yeah. yeah, this is. Uh, uh, can I ask a question before uh, progressing, please? Yes, please. Is there any much difference um, between this? Um, yeah, with regards protocols between um, Ajax True Client and this mobile, is there any vast difference between? The respective clients will be using, like the one used for AJS2 clients and the one used for mobile. So, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, may, may I get your name, please? This is Sano from US. Okay, hi there. Uh, welcome to the uh, demo session. Okay, so mobile AJAX, okay, here's the thing, right? Uh, True Client AJAX mobile is. Uh, um, a protocol which one can easily get it done, which is more on a UI level based. Okay, you the uh, it how how do I put it right? Let me let me show the screen. In fact, that will kind of take us through our today's lookup. Okay, uh, this is how a script of True Client Ajax Mobile Web would look like. Okay, does it make sense? This is how the script would look like. It won't. It is more of a UI level part wherein one can just understand, even read it and understand as to what it looks like. Okay. Now come to the actual native app recording that we have done. Okay. Uh, Baby Center and ICIC Direct. Let's say ICIC Direct being my favorite. Uh, it has the actual script being recorded in the HTTP ML mode. Okay. Now how have we done that? 
this uh, part of the reason we have definitely not used fiddler for this we've actually gone ahead and used uh, uh, your uh, device emulator uh, which hosts a native app and we have recorded the native app literally uh, so chandan and uh, himanshu does that answer your uh, point if i'm not wrong i think you had raised this about native apps right initially yeah yeah so that is there uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, my friend from US, uh, you just mentioned about uh, uh, Sano, right? Yeah. So Sano, uh, is this your question that you're asking? How different is your true client Ajax protocol than uh, actual mobile HTTP HTML level recording? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, that was my question. I, I thought, I thought we, with mobile, we're going to use the same um, true client protocol um, for mobile recording. That was my idea. But uh -huh. okay. So. Yes. So. Oh, thanks. Thanks for asking. Please feel free to ask any more questions going forward as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So mobile, uh, true client mobile, yes, we are going to be looking at it, especially for the sake of people who are completely new to mobile performance testing. Uh, at the same time, we are going to get this run over the low test execution. And also we are going to be looking at your HTTP HTML based recording when it comes to a native app. OK, uh, this is what another native app like uh, Baby Center is, especially for the pregnant women, is what they use. Uh, to track the pregnancy. Uh, this is the native app for baby center and this is how it looks like. Okay. Are we comfortable so far, guys? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so that's a quick teaser, okay? Just, just, just that you all should know. That's a quick teaser as to what's headed your way. Okay. Uh, Android architecture. Anytime you're familiar with, please, uh, you know, kind of feel free to uh, mention your inputs. I would love to have it interactive. Okay. Uh, now, your uh, this is nothing but your actual Android uh, software stack, how it looks like, your basic uh, high-level architecture. Um, now, the base of the Android architecture is nothing but your kernel. Okay. This uh, this is this is this is the kernel. Okay, now it's built around Linux. Okay, the version of Linux that we normally look at, which we normally have for our, our maybe we can have it for our Mac OS or for any other operating system that we would like to have, uh, it, it consumes a lot of space. However, when it comes to Linux on a mobile device, it is highly optimized for the mobile operating systems. Okay, uh, it works best so that we can have a highly, okay, just give me a minute. I am sorry about that. Yeah, uh, sorry, I was getting a call. Uh, now, this Linux is, how different is it from uh, an actual uh, Linux that is on your desktop, right? Uh, it is basically optimized. It's an optimized level of Linux with regards to a highly constrained CPU and memory capacity. Okay, let me repeat it again. This is a highly optimized, and guys, you can take notes if you need be, and I'll be supplying the deck as well later on. Uh, however, taking a personal notes will, all be, will always be recommended. Uh, that will help you have a clear understanding. Uh, this Linux will have uh, is, is different in terms of uh, the fact that it is optimized with a perspective of highly constrained CPU and a short memory capacity. Okay, remember you definitely don't want your one single app eating up all the memory uh, that can be reserved for your actual operating system or for that matter be reserved for other apps which consumes right uh, uh, that, that that's something you would definitely not want so i'm going to do it this way right i'm going to mention it this way while we talk about a particular uh, section of an architecture i'm also going to be referring to the bottlenecks that are associated with it guys i'm sorry just give me one minute to step out for this one just give me one minute please hello हाँ बोलिए जल्दी नहीं रॉन्ग नंबर ओके सॉरी अबाउट दैट सो व्हाट व्हाट वी गोना डू इज वी टॉक वी गोना टॉक अबाउट अ पर्टिकुलर कंपोनेंट ऑफ़ दी एंड्रॉइड आर्किटेक्चर एंड वी गोना बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दी एसोसिएटेड बॉटलनेक्स विथ इट दैट वे 
uh, we don't have too many questions left at the end of the day for you know uh, when it comes to interview level uh, question, uh, scenarios as well okay uh, now uh, linux kernel right what we are talking about is uh, this is the piece which will actually interact with your uh, overall mobile this will be the heart of the mobile and this linux is highly optimized with an intent of uh, constrained cpu and memory capacity on top of that is your android runtime okay your android runtime is nothing but it enables the behavior of linux let me put it this way it's like the hand and mouth hand mouth and legs for your uh, uh, your internal body of linux okay um, associated with it are certain libraries which are also crucial when it comes to uh, how many of, heard, of us have actually heard the concept of Dalvik, uh, Dalvik virtual machine? Okay, uh, take that as a no. Uh, JVM, familiar, right? Yeah. Yeah, excellent. So Dalvik, uh, Dalvik VM or Dalvik virtual machine is nothing but your JVM for your Android, okay, or, or basic uh, Android architecture. All right. Now, uh, moving on, uh, the application framework, it sits on top of the Android runtime and the associated libraries. And finally, obviously, this is the applications part of it, which is e, which can either be operating system based, like, for example, your, your, your default contact applications, okay, contacts, let's say, or phone dialing application, or for that matter, your messaging application. These are your, cust uh, your, your operating system based applications, whereas later on, the ones that you download from your Play Store, they are nothing but your uh, custom based applications, okay? Let's quickly move on. Android software stack. Okay, uh, guys, uh, today's uh, since we are kind of uh, you know running short on time, we will ensure that we are covering every question with regards to the deck that we've covered so far. At the same time, the rest of the things will be parked for for our tomorrow session. Okay. Okay. So uh, Android, uh, your your Linux kernel, right? Your Linux kernel. Uh, would actually interact with the drivers. Okay, it's nothing but it's a it's a it's, a, it's an amalgamation of the operating system which in, which which holds your drivers, drivers for your camera, drivers for your audio of the device, drivers for your display, Wi-Fi, power management. You talk about it, and every driver is kind of associated with your Linux kernel over here. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much of time on this. Okay, now your Android runtime. Okay. Uh, Oh, one more thing I wanted to cover mainly. Yeah. So uh, let's say if uh, how uh, we, we will also understand about how these uh, mobiles keep evolving, right? Uh, Vivo started with a basic uh, 10 megapixel or a 20 megapixel. Now it has reached to 64 megapixel if I'm not sure. Uh, what do they do? They actually do nothing but enhance the drivers. Of... I'm sorry. I'm just Okay. Uh, if you all have a question, uh, please uh, raise it in the chat window. Uh, I'll be more than happy to answer the question. Okay. Uh, now, your uh, Linux, uh, okay, Vivo had a 10 megapixel, 20 megapixel, and now it has, I believe, reached to 64 or, or 48 megapixel uh, camera, right? What do they do? These people, they enhance the drivers, okay? Uh, with with two uh, with two people or with two entities primarily contributing to it. One is Google itself. The Google Google has to con uh, contribute to your driver. Secondly, the vendor who builds the driver actually they have to go ahead and contribute towards it. Okay. Uh, so these two uh, com entities they kind of help you evolve your mobile. So today, if you're looking at an evolved mobile, this is the component which helps it evolve. Okay. Let's understand that very clearly. Okay. Moving on to the other one, Android software stack for which, which which will hold your Android runtime. Okay, what your Android runtime holds is the Dalvik virtual machine, which is nothing but your JVM in 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 a in a simple language, and certain core libraries. Okay, uh, again, when we talk about uh, it, it kind of uh, how how do I put it right? Uh, it's a highly optimized version of your JVM. Okay, uh, how is the question? So what is the job of a JVM? And uh, oh, sorry, I'll unmute you. Sorry. <clears throat> JVM, JVM is used for 
running the run runtime code for Java. JVM is used for running the runtime code or for Java. Okay. What is the first output of a JVM? And we should like there's nothing has to be right. Nothing has to be right. You can Hello? just be wrong. Can yeah. you repeat Hi, the question? Yeah. Sure. So some um, of my question is what is the job of a JVM? Actually, JVM um, in, in Java, when we talk about JVM, it's like this is where um, we have our JRE and the, and the JGK. They are there to actually run and execute our byte code. Yeah. We have so many areas, you know, this is the area we actually concentrate. We as performance tester, we are we actually going to pay more attention to the heap. The heap memory is actually located in the JVM, and mm -hmm. in there we have so many partition. You know. Excellent, 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 Sano. Thank you, thank you for bringing that up. Which is why I'm kind of uh, pausing on that and you know uh, asking a question as to what uh, importance does JVM? Uh, so, guys, JVM is the performance. Uh, to put it very simple, okay, JVM is your performance in a way. Uh, it contributes heavily to your performance. Uh, please, you can just go on mute, uh, please. Uh, Pasi, I request you to be on mute, please. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so JVM holds a majority of your performance together. Okay. If you are low on it, or if there is an app that is eating up your memory, uh, where well, you're not good, you're not good. Okay. Uh, now, my second question was, what is the first output of a JVM? Is it my code? Sorry? Is it my code? Excellent. Uh, thank you, Sano. It's byte yeah. code. Yeah. Now, the byte code, the byte code of a normal JVM is much larger. Okay. Is much larger, which operates on maybe on your desktop or your laptop. Okay. It's much larger as compared to that byte code which a Dalvik virtual machine generates. Okay. Guys, are we getting it? Are we cool with it? Yes. Okay. So that is the reason why you can actually run the same application that you're running on your desktop and the same application on your uh, mobile device. Okay. Uh, have you ever wondered that how come the same application that runs in, let's say, 500 MB on my uh, on, on my laptop is running in maybe like 50 MB or or a, or a maybe 120 MB on, on my mobile device. Part of the reason is your JVM and the amount, the, the kind of byte code that it generates is quite different from a normal uh, Java compiler byte code. Okay. Are we making sense, guys? Yes. Perfect. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, libraries. Crucial. Now, uh, yeah. Yeah. I would request to be mute. Yeah. Not, uh... I'm there. No, no, no. I'm yeah. going to ask one question. I yes. think uh, in the web and uh, mobile applications, are they preparing any uh, different applications uh, in the production side? Show suppose if a customer is accessing from the laptop, then they are planning to show so from which resource uh, end user how they are accessing from laptop. So better to show application if he's accessing from mobile they are planning to show uh, the mobile application like that they are uh, designing the application like that or how we should it? excellent question Kasi uh, which kind of revolves us back to the earlier slide which I shared uh, let me quickly bring that up to refresh your uh, thoughts on this uh, how do I do this f5 sorry okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah this one uh, Kasi, this piece was actually shown with regards to an mo how does the mobile technology actually work. They don't build separate apps for that. Okay, what I'm talking about is when you're when you're watching the content on your you, do you see this block over here? Kasi, are you there? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Yeah, FT. Yes, yes, yes. So, guys, your HTML5. Okay is having the ability 
to be responsive design based to be responsive uh, response based design okay uh, that way it will render the content effectively on your safari browser it will render the content effectively on your uh, uh, on safari browser on your iphone let me let me be specific it will also render the content on your internet browser which is on your windows pc okay so you're not looking at different uh, different applications kasi you're looking at one application which is a response based design okay uh, i did share uh, a page i think earlier i did i close it i didn't close it yes <coughs> i'm sorry okay this was the part which i just uh, showed through initially you see the way it is kind of uh, adjusting itself right so it will adjust itself based on what or who the user is watching okay so this piece if you see this piece wasn't there when you're looking at an expanded web based page okay but when you minimize okay. it or when you can content of it it automatically adjusts itself so you're not looking at different uh, development for all of them. okay got it okay you think perfect all right uh, coming back to our content and uh, okay um so uh, uh, so one more question uh, you mean to say all the web applications are developed like that only any web and mobile application are only um, that specific flip card there is a lot of background noise okay. um so mobile applications i wouldn't say yes to that because android development and, and you know your ios development is definitely different no doubt about it but what i'm talking about is a web based application uh which is uh primarily built these days is response based design if it is not response based design it is not a good design and you definitely need to recommend one okay flipkart Bala? careers uh, yeah yeah my question is uh, the flipkart careers you will have a app also to download right i'm sorry so when it is uh, you have shown some uh, flipkart careers right right Yes, yes, yes. Okay, if it is uh, downloaded from the mobile, uh, I will be able to see like that. Uh, if it is, uh, it is accessed on the web, uh, I will be see it in a different format, right? That's what you are saying. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, uh, my question is, uh, when the applications can be developed like this, why the people are using specifically Android for development? Hmm. Okay. So, uh, very, very good one. Um, let me. To, for which i would want to come to this slide again okay uh, guys uh, we are we are moving with times right we are we are moving with evolving times wherein initially no one thought about a app no one thought about an app right everyone thought about a browser every content was there on a browser this app level concept came across when your mobile technology actually came into place in the first in the, in the first thing and no none of the people thought that anything like this was possible okay what people thought is your basic custom uh, your, your basic operating system based apps are the only apps that one could possibly have i'm talking about phone and talking about uh, your messages and stuff like that however eventually they they also arrived to a conclusion that not always your web based app will be able to cater to a mobile based device which is where the android package okay which is where the android package came into existence okay apk is what we call okay now apk mein, what they are doing is they are packing the whole content in a highly optimized and reduced manner you see your laptop and devices might have 1 tb and 2 tb core memory but your iphone and ipad won't have that kind of a memory right agreed with to, to cater to such kind of a request you ought to have a adapted kind of app uh, present out there on your device which is why the native app ka first thought came into play now when it comes to native app what we are looking at is what all forms are we looking at we are looking at a cpu uh, we, we are looking at an app which is highly uh, optimized when it comes to using minimum cpu minimum memory uh, and minimum uh, hardware drivers as well because remember it's a process uh, when when we come to load runner when we are talking about running a particular test we run a user as a thread and we run a user as a process what do you think true client runs uh, a basic user as can you can someone answer that a true client uh, what is a user running as user process process, process. Right. 
why 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 do you think so because because it's consumed a lot of memory uh okay but it is actually uh, yes that is true thank you and, the, and the memory yeah. footprint is so huge than the HTML, HTTP HTML protocol, yeah. Precisely. Now, the idea is, guys, if you're talking about 300, so here's the ratio, right? It's 1 is to 10 ratio. So if you're talking about 300 HTTP HTML level users, in the same amount of memory, you can only use 30 true client users, okay? That is the significance, which is where one thought that, okay, uh, we can't have the same level, uh, same approach running on an iPhone, and same approach running on a Windows PC. That is where my transition happens to a uh, APK level package, which constructs the whole application into a smaller version of it, wherein every user that will run, even though if it runs as a process, it will not consume that much of CPU and that much of memory. Bala, does that answer? But still, the native apps are more effective, right? Than these. Uh... Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Because native apps hold the whole application together, wherein your Windows, uh, let's say, a browser that you are looking at, it might. Not, so nowadays, right? We have, we have become smarter. We have become smarter by saying that okay, it's a single page browser. Sorry, it's a single page application, and all the components on the application are loaded later on. Are we aware of this concept? No. No. Okay. So let me let me explain this one in a, in a shorter way. We are short on time. In in uh, okay. Uh, one page if it gets displayed. Okay. Let me go back. Why am I talking? Let me do this. Display. Okay. Now you tell me. Uh, do you think all the data is so all the data related to this application or this web based thing is is loaded at the same time? What I'm talking about is the content with regards to about the content with regards to life at Flipkart. Okay, these images are these images uh, loaded all of them uh, in, in the background or when uh, I am uh, uh, looking at this home page. Do you think so? No, no, no. Okay. Now the idea behind that is to make sure that my web my my, my home page uses the least amount of resources because what I want to work on is the rendering time coming back to performance. It's funny how all of this links to performance, right? So uh, my home page, I want to make sure that it renders in the minimal base time. So what I'll do is I'll load the bare minimum components. Like for example, this is not honestly a good way to kind of uh, have a web page which is with a video running right at the background because obviously it is consuming a lot of uh, 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 memory in the, in, the, in the first load, in the first and the second load, I would say. But once you have loaded this, this would stay back this would stay back in your mem cache and you'll be able to see it as fast as possible okay not all the components are loaded at the same time so which is where i would say ah, not a good idea uh, i would still say not a very optimized design because when you come to your uh, mobile applications do you see the amount now here's my question second question do you see the amount of network available or used when you simply click a button of login on ICICI Direct or maybe anywhere else on a particular mobile app. Do you see the amount of uh, network uh, transition, network uh, bandwidth that is consumed? Let me be very clear. Yeah. Have you all seen that? Have you have you measured that? Ek app. Let me put. Sorry, guys. I'm going to be using Hindi as well in between sometime. One app. How much amount of time or sorry, how much amount of network bandwidth does it occupy when one person uh, clicks on a button on an app? Have you all observed that? Yeah, sometimes. Okay, uh, Tejaswini, where have you uh, observed that uh, uh, exchange happening? The amount of things, uh, the amount of. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not sure whether this is uh, exactly uh, what you're talking about. Is uh, on the top bar on the mobile, when I click on the application, it shows me the uh, the uh, kilobytes per second or the network speed. So is that the one you're talking about? Excellent, Yeah, that's exactly what I'm referring to. Okay, uh, guys, yeah. homework simple. Play around with your mobile and please enable the network I, uh, network uh, bandwidth uh, uh, notification on your mobiles. Okay, 
uh, it does uh, let me uh, mind it it will uh, consume a lot of uh, battery power for sure uh, at the same time it will show you every uh, click and the amount of that click has and the amount of network bandwidth that the click has consumed okay it will show that that network and an actual web application being displayed on your desktop the amount of network consumed for both of them is way too different is way too different okay uh, uh, that that is one of the reasons again i would say bala to your answer to your question mobile apk or a mobile package is always best okay it loads the application on the it, it loads the complete application at the same time you are consuming the minimal amount of network bandwidth at the same time you are also consuming the minimal amount of cpu and memory as well not to mention at times have you seen when you install something on your mobile I, i'm not sure guys i'm going to intricate on this right maybe if you install something on your mobile the mobile gets heated up have you observed that So, guys, that is another factor when it comes to a, a difference between an actual web-based load test, or sorry, a, a web-based uh, performance and a, a mobile-based performance. With mobile-based performance, you also have to be so mindful about your uh, drivers that they don't get over-consumed, okay? Uh, or else you will just have your mobile uh, being frozen up, and the best way to restart a frozen mobile is to reboot, okay? Uh, that doesn't happen with your desktop. You open a web page. Maximum, what you do is you right click, go to Task Manager, get rid of the browser itself, right? So that's that's another uh, difference between a mobile-based performance and a uh, uh, desktop or a laptop-based performance uh, architecture. Okay, guys, I think we are almost uh, to the end of the. We are we are over and above the time. Uh, let me see what uh, place have we reached on our slides. Just give me one second. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I I would want to cover this piece tomorrow because this is important and I want to give it its due justification, due time. Uh, but so far, I'm not going to keep the theory. So guys, here's the thing, right? Uh, when we say theory, I don't want it to be bo sounding boring at all. I want you all to be able to relate with it. Now, I hope the theory that we covered today. Uh, don't. Please don't. I want request. Please don't treat it as a theory and a, like a maybe yeah the real action gets started tomorrow or the next weekend when we actually do the scripting. Well, that is true. That is good as an individual contributor. But going forward, you would want to have a perspective as to how things work, where the bottle bottleneck identification. So tomorrow, if you'll ask me, hey guys, Sandeep, we have not uh, Sandeep, we have not really covered any mobile analysis or bottleneck uh, bottleneck identification analysis. We have not done any of that. Well, I would say class one. Okay. Uh, we did all of that right from the uh, uh, component level thing and where, what all areas can we identify areas of bottlenecks as well. And we will do that. Okay, we will continue to do that. Uh, tomorrow, I would also again would want to just highlight a couple of bottleneck items with regards to this one and this one for sure. Okay, um, I I believe uh, uh, we are we are good for today. Uh, if there are any questions, we can take them now. Yes, any questions so far? Yeah, Sandeep, I just want to add one more point. Uh, you have mentioned, right, like, what are the expectations? You have mentioned somewhere, yeah. I want to just add one more point, like Android or iOS profiler. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Anything else, Shandan? No, I'm good. Okay, uh, Chandan, is it making sense? Is it is it kind of being relative? Uh, Chandan, couldn't couldn't hear you. Is the is the content kind of making sense? Is it relevant to you? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay, good. how about the guys? Are we good? Yes. 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 Sir. yes. Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was skeptical and worried about the part. Uh, hurry to your question. Which version of LR? Anything above twelve point six zero or twelve point five five is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Murli, uh, yeah, Murli was there earlier. Murli, we took your round of introduction, right? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, sorry. I think there was a person called Rupa who stepped in and uh, got dropped. Okay, fine, great. So guys, uh, that's about it for today.